Let's take a look at some of the new user interface enhancements found within Cubase Pro 10. The first impression that you may have is that Cubase looks a lot crisper. Over a thousand windows have been completely redesigned to take advantage of high DPI scaling. So if you have a 4K or retina display, it will greatly benefit from the new user interface. This makes it easier to look at, clearer, and also helps with eye fatigue. Many of the windows have been completely redesigned as well to make them more clear. Let's take a look at our export audio mix down, our automation panel, our project synchronization setup, as well as our project setup. The tools, while cosmetically slightly different, have the same functionality. And we could just hover over a particular tool while holding down the right mouse button to select that tool. If a tool has multiple functions, such as our drawing tool or object selection tool, we could hover while holding down the right mouse button, click on the left mouse button to switch modes. To quickly navigate back to the object selection tool, do a quick right mouse click and this object selection tool will then be enabled. Colorizing tracks has also been simplified. You may notice that we have a new icon here that allows us to, for colorizing, selected tracks or events. If you don't see that, go to the setup window and make sure that it is enabled. The color tool has been removed from the main toolbox, but now we can hit alter option plus shift and the letter C and we could have our color picker. This allows us to add new colors. As we see fit, we can double click, select a new color like so. And at this point, my color picker window can remain open. So if I select a number of different tracks, I can select those to be green, or if I selected a number of events, I want those to be yellow, this tool can remain open as you choose to color your different events. Adding tracks has also been simplified with the new add track command. So if I wanted to add tracks that could be used once within a project, we could click on this little triangle that points downward and we could see our different tracks here. We can still add tracks the old way. And one of the things that's happened is that the little icons have become more obvious, such as a five pin MIDI DIN connection for MIDI tracks, FX tracks are labeled group tracks. So some more obvious different types of track icons that we could see displayed here on the left hand side. If a track can be used multiple times within a project, we can click on the plus sign. And here we could set up and add audio instrument sampler MIDI tracks. So if I wanted to add an audio track, we could also select our audio input. So if I open up my audio connections, my inputs, and I wanted to add a mono audio track, as I select the input here, it's automatically going to be added in my audio connections. Here we could choose our channel configuration, where it's routed to on our output destination. We could give it a name as well as a quantity. Now one handy function is this keep dialog open. So if I have that, I could add those tracks. I can now add different group tracks. So if I want to add a couple of, of group channels, I wanted to add an effects channel, etc. I can do that while keeping the same dialog box open so I don't have to kind of start all over again. Many of the plugins also have new user interfaces to make them a bit more obvious. So while some have new functionality, we can have our stereo delay. Uh, we could have our bit crushers been updated. We have a mono delay, a new user interface for our cloner plugin, Studio EQ, which looks a bit like the frequency EQ, Magneto, as well as Reverence. So a lot of some of the plugins will have new functionality, but just about all the plugins have new updated user interfaces. One of the functions that's been updated is the popular 
channel strip functionality. So every single track in Cubase will have a channel strip. And here, without the use of third-party plugins, I could have a noise gate. I could have three different types of compressors. I could choose to have my channel EQ, my de or envelope shaper, three different types of saturation, as well as three different limiters. To change the signal flow of these, just simply drag like so. The compressor plugins can also allow us to have a user interface within the channel strip. So if you want finer detail of control. So if I wanted to see my standard compressor, let's go to the tube compressor or the vintage compressor. The media tab makes incorporating and finding your plugins and loops easier as well. So there's been some great enhancements here. So when you start off, we have some new icons such as loops. We'll have a loop icon, presets, favorites will be a bit more obvious. So we have our VST instruments and we could have our default collection here. And if I wanted to see them all expanded, I click on the plus sign. If I want to see them all collapsed, I could click on the minus sign. Clicking on just one tab will allow us to open up our plugins like so. If I wanted to see graphic user interface icons for all of my plugins, I could click here. And then as I expand, we can now see user interface thumbnails. And again, if I wanted to see them just as text, click there like so. New what we've added is the ability to do this with effects channel plugins. So I could see my delays. And again, if I wanted to see them all with my graphic user interfaces. And one of the handy features that was introduced in previous versions of Cubase was the plugin manager where you could create your own different types of plugin collections. So the plugin manager can be accessed from the media tab. And if we wanted to navigate to a specific plugin collection of our favorites for mixing, for instance, we could just have our plugin collections here. If I double click, I could see all of the presets for that particular plugin. And if I wanted to just drag and drop to make different instrument tracks, I can now come to this particular instrument. And at this point, add an instrument track by dragging and dropping like so. If I wanted to add a particular insert effect to a channel, come directly to my EQs and drag it and you see where the cursor goes to the center of the track that will automatically add that plugin to the next available slot. Or if I wanted a plugin to go to a specific insert slot, drag and drop to that slot. To create an effects channel easily, just drag and drop the plugin where you see the green line between tracks, that effect, effects track has been added that easily. Now people had complained that we are only doing the graphic user interfaces for Steinberg plugins. So if I want it to come here and we'll collapse all of our plugins, and we'll go to our default view and we'll go to our other plugins. And let's say this particular plugin interface, when I add it, we don't have that visual image. So for any of the plugins, third party or plugins that come with the Steinberg program, we can now click on this little camera icon. And as we do this, we could now add that particular image that we want for that plugin. So if you're using any of your third party plugins, you can create the plugin GUI image of the state of the plugin as you see. So as you can see, the new user interface enhancements can really speed up your workflow with Cubase Pro 10. If you have found this video useful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.